Welcome to Introduction to Finance. Welcome to Introduction to Finance Session 4 on Long-Term Financial Planning and Growth. In this session, a very important session, we're going to look at uh, how do we budget and how do we forecast, two key components of your professional lives and somewhat even in your personal life, doing a per, uh, personal financial budget is very, very important. Um, we're going to look at several key formulas that are critical to the success of this session. And uh, some of these ratios depend on ratios we learned in session number three. So we're building upon that knowledge. First of all, dividend payout ratio. I have net income in my company. Uh, do I keep it or do I give it away? So the dividend payout ratio will look at how much you pay out or give away in the form of cash dividends. So it's cash dividends divided by net income. We're going to call that D. And I just made that up. The author doesn't call it D, but I do. Uh, and the author does look at retention ratio, uh, the fifth ratio there. Uh, that is addition, addition to retained earnings or how much of my net income I keep divided by my total net income. So if we think of net income as a pi, we have D equals 1 minus B and we have B equals 1 minus D. That's a good way to think about net income. What do I do with my net income? Do I keep it or in the form of uh, retained earnings or do I give it away in the form of cash dividends? Another important ratio in this financial planning realm is capital intensity. How uh, capital intensive is my company? Uh, typically, it has high capital intensity if I have lots of property, plant, and equipment. Therefore, my total assets will go up relative to my sales. Capital intensity ratio, or CIR, measures uh, how many dollars of assets do I need relative to my uh, dollar of sales. And we'll look at this in the um, instances of the Rosengarten Corporation and the Hoffman Company later in the in this session. Um, also, two key ratios on how fast can I grow my company. Internal growth rate is the rate at which I can grow my company without any external financing whatsoever. No plug, as we call it. Uh, it's ROA times B, quantity ROA times B divided by 1 minus quantity ROA times B. Same thing in the denominator uh, as the numerator. Uh, sustainable growth rate is how fast I can grow my company without any equity financing. Equity financing can be expensive. Uh, debt financing is fine. While maintaining my debt to equity ratio is slightly different than the IGR, mathematically, it's ROE times B divided by 1 minus quantity ROE times B. Uh, PEMDAS is critical here. Um, that's the order of operations. Make sure you uh, use the parentheses smartly and do those calculations first and then do the other calculations to assure you get the correct internal growth rate and sustainable growth rate. Uh, our learning objectives in session four are we want to look at financial planning overall. What's, why do we do financial planning? We want, do, want, do not want to stumble into the future backwards. We want to go full force ahead, uh, knowing where we're going. So financial planning is one way to help you get there. We're going to look at financial planning models, some key financial planning models and practices uh, that go on in business that you will use once you go out into the uh, business world. Uh, percent of sales approach, you may have heard about. What are my costs as a percent of sales? What are my assets as a percent of sales? What are my liabilities as a percent of sales? And then we use that information to forecast, basically. Uh, budgeting, and then some long-term financial planning. Uh, learning objective number four, external financing and growth. How much financing do I need to grow? So we uh, heard the adage, it takes money to make money, and that's uh, never more than true, uh, never been truer than in this session. Uh, external financing is required if we want to grow. In, in many, many cases. And finally, uh, objective number five, what are some caveats regarding financial planning models looking ahead out into the future? Uh, there are no answers, really, and oftentimes um, the administration of your company won't tell you what the growth rate they're looking for. You kind of iterate. You propose a growth rate, um, you go back and re-propose and re-propose and re-propose. We're going to look at caveats regarding these financial planning models. Uh, we will develop a plan. It may take the form of a book or a package or a series of slides, uh, but it's not the plan that's important, it's the planning. Financial planning looks at the way we, uh, are, which, well, the way we will attain our financial goals um, in the future. That may be the one-year budget target. That may be a five-year uh, set of plans. Uh, it helps us avoid stumbling into the future backwards. We want to know where we're going, and the financial plan will help us get there. Uh, we want to anticipate possible problems before they arise. Your supervisor will often say, no surprises. Please let me know if anything looks like it may be a monster ready to bite us. And um, so no surprises, please. 
and we're looking for guidelines for uh, change and growth. From chapter one, we remember that the financial manager is worried about three things. To, in this chapter, we're going to add a fourth thing, fourth item. The CFO worries about capital budgeting, which again is property, plant, and equipment. We're going to worry about that in our financial plan. Uh, the CFO worries about capital structure. Where am I going to get the money to uh, pay for these new buildings that I might have to build to reach my sales goal uh, in the capital budgeting uh, decision? Uh, the capital structure decision answers that. How much debt will I take on? How much equity will I take on? That's uh, point number two on the mind of the CFO. Point number three, how much networking capital will I need to run my business? Uh, this is a liquidity decision. Um, will I have enough current assets to pay off my current liabilities in a timely fashion? And fourth, we're going to add a fourth dimension in this chapter, and that is, um, do I pay dividends or not? And this is a board of directors management decision. You do not have to pay dividends. You can plow all your monies back into the company uh, if you wish. Growth itself is not an appropriate goal. Um, again, the overall goal of financial management is to increase market value per share of existing stock. And we want to look at how do we go about doing that in our financial plan. Some examples of overgrowth, overzealous growth, might be the Italian oven and Boston chicken. If you've heard of these companies, you may see a few of them still hanging around in some small towns, but uh, they're not as pervasive as they used to be. They both basically grew too fast did not calculate their internal growth rate and sustainable growth rate, and maybe they should have. Uh, management lost control, just growing too fast, and that they ran into financial failure. Um, Italian oven collapsed. Uh, and again, you may see one or two of these uh, restaurants around occasionally. Uh, Boston Chicken was bought by McDonald's and uh, now called Boston Market, and again, growing too fast. Uh, they've scaled back quite a bit. You may see some other examples in recent business history of companies growing too fast. Um, Starbucks had some issues here recently where they would put uh, Starbucks on every corner, it seems, in some big cities, and they found that it just doesn't work. So growth may be a desirable con consequence of good decision making, but is not an end in and of itself. Again, we want to maximize market value per share of existing stock. Uh, two dimensions of the financial plan. Typically, again, you'll do a five-year plan. The first year of that is called the short run. Uh, or the budget. So the short run is one year, the budget, and years two through five are called the planning horizon or the long run. Um, and we focus, the long range planning focuses on years two through five. Uh, we will aggregate several different business units in the large company. For instance, at a company where I worked, a large chemical company, we, I uh, was financial analyst for the Catalyst division. It was a $60 million division uh, in sales. They had $6 million in net income, 10% net return on sales. Um, and we would add that together with Acetylenix, and we would add that together with performance chemicals. We'd add it together with um, agricultural chemicals, polymers, and so on, uh, all these small uh, business units, small being relative, uh, they were some of them were fairly large into the uh, hundreds of millions of dollars in sales, and add them all together, and, and you come up with a total ke uh, chemical division, and then we would add a gases division to that, and the total would be a several billion dollar uh, chemical company. Uh, and the fi each of these business units, analysts would develop a financial plan, and we'd add them all together in the aggregate format. Uh, financial planning answers uh, several questions. What can it accomplish? Looking at interactions. How do these various business units interact? How do people interact? What are the costs of these interactions? Uh, what are some of the options? Everyone seems to want the star chemical engineer if you're in a chemical company, and you can't uh, work this person 190 hours a week. They're only there 40 hours, maybe 50 hours. And uh, everyone wants the star. So what is the cost of everyone having the star? Can you share that? And are there options to share that key person across many business units? So the financial plan looks at that. We don't want any surprises. We don't want every business unit planning that superstar uh, for 110% of, of his or her time. And we want to look at uh, in, uh, feasible. We want all this to be feasible and internally consistent. Now, in a financial plan, there are six key ingredients, the first of which are the economic assumptions. Typically, they come from, in a large corporation, the treasury group upstairs uh, near the CFO or the CFO's office. Uh, this may include things like the interest rate, uh, in the case of a chemical company, uh, the price of oil, uh, the price of gas, um, and things like that. So general economic assumptions are the uh, GDP growth and how fast we think the economy is going to grow. And then uh, from that, we'll make our other predictions. Second in line, we'll then do a sales forecast. Generally, you go to the marketing department, talk to your marketing leadership, 
and see what kind of volumes they can sell in the coming year and at what price. So you get some price and volume decisions made by the marketing people. At that point, they have to understand they commit to those, especially for the first year. Uh, years two through five are a little less regulated, but certainly for year one, that becomes the budget and their performance may hinge on their ability to make that sales forecast. So they better be careful with what they put into the uh, financial plan, certainly, if they're held to that for performance basis. Uh, pro forma statements are next. So from the sales forecast, we'll do an income statement first, and then the balance sheet, and then the, uh, the uh, statement of cash flows. All three of those key financial statements that we discussed in session two will be built. And again, for five years, and some of these are this long. Um, they are not just sales and cost and net income, but rather you may see a 30-line income statement with uh, 30 different categories, where, which you'll have to forecast for each and every year, and each of them has a different assumption. Uh, that's how it works in the real world. Uh, asset requirements, what kind of property, plant, and equipment do we need to buy and build uh, if we need to hit the sales forecast? And what are the financial requirements in the capital structure? What kind of debt and equity will I take on to grow as fast as we want to grow? Finally, when the balance sheet doesn't balance, we want to uh, plug it in and make the balance sheet uh, balance because it's got to be, as we learned from my, prior, from my uh, former accounting teacher. Uh, plug it in. This is external financing needed when the balance sheet doesn't balance, when assets are greater than liabilities plus equity, and we know it's got to be, so we just simply plug in the difference. And we'll look at where do you plug it in.